Hi guys, this is Reverend Adam again, and I'm here today because I wanted to show you a little trick I came up with a while back, uh, quite a long time, and I've been using it since. And, uh, well, the trick is that I take a regular candle um, that you can get at your grocery store in the, in the Jewish section. They're called Shabbat candles. I like them because they burn pretty quickly. Um, this is the candle itself, about the size that you get them. I like them um, not only because they burn pretty quickly, but because they're pretty easy to work with for me. One of the tricks I do is I use the seven Holy Spirit baths that you can probably get at my website. I know I have them. And my website's name is innerlightcatalog.com. And what I do is I get about three of these in preparation sometimes just for whatever I might have coming up. And I put them into a little Ziploc bag, which I also sell these in bulk on my website. Um, and what I do is I add one equal part of each seven bottles that comes with that seven spirit bath, that seven holy spirit bath. I add equal parts of each one of those seven bottles to this bag, and then I let them, I let the candles in this bag absorb this oil for however long they may be on my altar or stored away. Um, normally, if I'm doing this kind of setup, what I do is I let them stay in the bag for at least 24 hours before I use them. And uh, some people, they'll just let them stay overnight if they make them that previous, the day before, they'll just let them stay overnight and use them the next day, um, which also works very effectively. But I like this particular Seven Holy Spirit bath because, um, well, it, it just seems to work for me. Um, I don't really follow the instructions because you're supposed to take a bath each day for seven days um, and only one of those oils that it comes with each day. Um, but originally, instead of, you know, taking a bath with one oil from the seven oils each day, what we would do is we would combine them all into one bath. And then we would put that into our bathtub with all the oils at once. And we would do our psalms and we would recite our prayers or our incantations to purify ourselves, to get rid of any negative energy that might be there. Some people have used it to get rid of packs that they've had with spirits, um, things like that. So as you can see, I've made my water with that oil as well. And I'm going to end up using that in my bath. And what I do is I don't use the whole bottle. I use half of the bottle because this oil is very potent and goes a long way. I had a recipe for it. I tried to find it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the recipe for the day. But I can tell you that when I do find it, I will make a video on how to make these oils yourself. Now, what I also wanted to share with you today is, like I said, something that I did when I was away from YouTube and just kind of got very spontaneous one day, felt like I needed to create something, got an idea from a YouTube video on how to make uh, rose water. And basically what they did in it was they put a pot on the stove with rose petals in the bottom of it and some water to barely cover the top of those petals. Then they put a brick on that, and then in like the center of this uh, this pot, and then they put a bowl, an empty bowl, on top of that, on the inside of the pot. Then they would cover the pot up with the lid, but the lid would be upside down, and what it would do is all that steam from boiling that water would rise up to the top, and it would condense and drop down into the empty bowl giving you the liquid as a distillation with the uh, smell of the rose in it.
and that's how they created rose water. Well, I got the idea of using a different type of flower instead of a rose. And the flower's name was Camellia. Camellia was very, uh, very fragrant flower, and I have it growing in my backyard, and I really like the smell of it, so I pulled off all of these petals. I mean, there's like tons of petals on the Camellia flower. And I put them in the in the pot and did all the instructions necessary to create uh, rose water. If you want, you can find the instructions on that video on YouTube if you search how to make rose water. And then after I made the water itself, I took it out and I added essential oils of mint, lotus, rose, and lavender. And it really turned out really nice. I, 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 the smell was phenomenal. It was great. And what I did was I looked it up and I found out that all of the products I used, except for the lotus oil, were in conjunction with drawing in money and riches, especially the camellia flower. And I really liked it. Now, what I did was I looked up the lotus as well, and I found out that the lotus negates any love spells that may have been against you, or put on you, or whatever you want to call it. It would kind of negate them, it would get rid of them, it would get, you know, it would break that spell. However, I did find out also that lotus is used for restoring truth, where there's gossip, or there's a lot of lies. I found out that there's a lot of different cleansing properties to lotus, and um, basically my conclusion was that I created a road opening potion or, or water that I can use for my clients, but not only would it just open up doorways in the road or remove blocks in the road, but it would also draw in money. And not only that, it would also help prevent any love coming in that was synthetic. And it would help draw true love to you. Because the lotus also stands for true love. So it was very interesting. And I used a little bit of my food coloring just to get it the reddish color. <laughs> Excuse me just to give it the reddish color that it is now. And um, it kind of looks like it's a little amberish on the webcam here, but I'm sure you get the point. And I just put a label on it that says money. I'm probably going to put another label that says road opener on it. And um, what I'm also going to be doing here is that I have a client and it's given me permission to kind of use this as an example. Um, I'm using what I refer to as a snake candle. It's a simple pillar that has a snake symbol wrapped all the way around it when it's molded. Um, and speaking of candles, uh, specifically idol candles like this or those um, idol candles that are male and female, I will be posting a video later on on how I actually make the male and female candles myself. Um, in the meanwhile, what she is going through right now is very dark forces have been against her, and she has a very strong curse on her. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to help break that curse using the snake candle. I'm going to send it right back to its source, and I'm not going to strengthen it. I'm just going to use the power of three on it. And I, I'm going to let, you know, nature take this course to balance it back out. But I am going to break it so that way it can no longer harm her. And I'm going to put the protection on her. What I'm going to do is, it's a little strange and not really very well known to do this. Is I'm going to use the same oil, because I have, like, a lot of it here. The Seven Holy Spirit Bath Oil. And I'm just going to use this to rub down this specific candle. Uh, it doesn't just work on the white candles um, that you can get in the grocery store. It works on any candle. 
Um, I also sell small candles for rituals that burn almost as quickly as these do on my website, which is innerlightcatalog.com. So, I'm going to rub it down, and I'm going to do my little work with this candle, and, you know, I'm going to put the intention into it and get that going. But in the meanwhile, uh, I think that I just wanted to show you this stuff and, and let you know some of the things. Before I begin any work I do, I like to rub myself down on my hands and my body with my Florida water. And um, that way I'm protected from any work that, you know, may have been against her. I don't want that energy to rub off on me. As practitioners yourselves, I'm sure you can understand that. Thank you. Blessed be.